Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to do a little bit of an unboxing, but more of a first look and a look at the build quality, construction, and handling of the new Zeiss Milvis. This is a Distagon T-Star 1.4 50mm, or a 50mm f1.4 lens. And uh, it, last year, Zeiss introduced six lenses in the Milvis line, and uh, Four of those were basically reskinned, rebodied versions of existing optical formulas, but two of them were uh, completely new optical formulas, and that was the Milvis 85 millimeter f1.4, which I reviewed here, and then also this 50 millimeter f1.4. I don't think it's coincidental that both of these new optical formulas come along around where there is an existing Otis lens, and one thing that I have found that there certainly is not just the overall Otis look that is embodied here, but a lot of the Otis DNA um, is included here. Now, the older version of, of Zeiss's 50 millimeter f1.4 lenses, and that was the uh, Planar T Star. And uh, the Planar, um, it was a design that was older, kind of vintage in the sense of both its wide open rendering, which um, it had a, a unique look that in many ways I liked, although it really was not very sharp wide open. It had kind of that soft, dreamy, hazy look, particularly when you looked at a pixel level, although it had very nice bokeh and unique drawing to the lens. I reviewed that lens actually here if you'd like to take a look. But at the same time, modern sensibilities demand lenses that have much higher resolution. And that lens only really got sharp when it was stopped down to uh, apertures as narrow as f4 and f5.6 and beyond. So in the process of releasing a new lens, Zeiss moved to a Distagon optical formula, much like what the Otis uh, 55 millimeter f1.4 is. And so this is a completely different lens than the previous generation 50 millimeter f1.4. It obviously has grown significantly in size. Um, it's a completely different optical design and its optical results are very, very different. We'll jump into that more in a later look at the optical quality, but today we're going to look more the actual build quality. As far as the unboxing goes, there's one thing that I do want to point out, and that is that while Zeiss does not include a case with their lenses, um, like the Otis lenses, the Milvis lenses come in what is almost like a display case here. It's custom uh, molded foam inside, and you can almost present the lens, and they are, of course, beautiful lenses inside of, of the box, much like the Otis lenses. So that's one thing to highlight from this, and nice here, it has a look at the optical formula, and so look inside of what's inside the lens. I'm looking at a ZE or a Canon mount of this lens and the primary difference between the Canon and the Nikon versions is that the Nikon versions include a manual aperture ring um, and so you can choose between auto, automatic iris control like the Canon version is but also using a uh, manual focus ring and with that the Milvis line has the option of de-clicking that and so if you're shooting video you can just rack through the um, without having any kind of, uh, of f-stops uh, defined along the way and so that's kind of one nicety that the Nikon version that has that the Canon does not. I chose to uh, bring out the uh, Tamron 45 millimeter f1.8 as a comparison point because while the Tamron has a slightly different focal length and a little bit narrower uh, maximum aperture value, both of the lenses have a quite a similar overall build size and uh, they're within a few millimeters of each other. And, and so that gives me kind of a comparison point. However, holding the Tamron in hand, although it's just a, uh, about a millimeter and a half less around and a few millimeters shorter, holding the Tamron is a very different experience from holding the Zeiss lens. And the Zeiss lens, it's not a, a big lens, it's more what I would call a medium sized lens. It's three and a quarter inches around, that's 82 and a half millimeters, and it's 3.84 inches or 97 and a half millimeters long. So not big, you know, kind of palm size for me. But oh, although the Tamron has a metal construction, it's a lightweight aluminum um, outer shell on it, and you know, it's, it's relatively hefty. Uh, for this class of lens. It's 544 grams. The Zeiss, of course, takes it to a whole new level, and it is a whopping 922 grams. Those of you that shoot Zeiss know what I, what I mean when I say that there is a unique feeling of density to Zeiss lenses that is unlike 
any other lens out there. It just has that solid, chunky feel to it, and you know that there is high-grade metal and glass that are part of the design of this lens. Part of the difference in going to the Milvis line was the inclusion of um, weather sealing, which Zeiss lenses did not have prior to this. And so there is a, a rubber gasket and a, uh, you know, a uniquely blue Zeiss color here. But also there are internal seals to make this have a very high grade of weather resistance. And one thing that I did note that unlike the Tamron, the Tamron, when it's, um, the rear element is in its most forward position, there's a little bit of a gap where you can see into the lens and see a little bit of the guts inside. That's not the case with this Milvis lens, and even in the fully forward position of the rear element, there are no gaps, no in entry into the in inside of the lens itself. And the only other lens that I have recently seen that is like that is the new Canon 35mm f1.4 L Mark II. And it had that similar construction to where it remained nicely sealed inside. That's certainly a plus here. Now you feel that weight, of course, when you mount it on the camera, but that being said, most of that weight is fairly close to the body, and so while it feels just a little bit front heavy, overall the, the lens balances quite nicely. And here I'm using a, a Canon 6D that I have set up with an EGS focus screen for doing these kinds of reviews, and it's a great combination. If you shoot manual focus glass a lot, I keep a, a body that's set up just like this. That EGS focus screen, it's a precision matte focus screen so you, see, you can see true depth of field. Thus, you can actually watch things coming into focus accurately accurately, it makes the manual focus experience a whole lot more fun. And uh, it's not expensive to get that focus screen under $40, and it literally took me two minutes to swap it out. And so I recommend doing that if you're going to shoot manual focus glass. And of course, it doesn't interfere with the use of your autofocus glass either. And so anyway, uh, but I find that that in overall in shooting here, the weight is not bad, even on the 6D, which is not a particularly large body. One thing that I always like about uh, the design that began with the Otis lenses is that the lens hood no longer feels like, you know, kind of a tacked on accessory. And I'm not trying to trash my Tamron 45 millimeter. I love the lens. But of course, its lens hood is just kind of a standard, um, you know, lens hood that it's pedal shaped and it clip, clicks on just like many, many other lenses. But with the Milvis lenses, like the Otis line, you can tell that the lens hood is designed to be a part of the overall flow of the design of the lens itself. And I really like the look of how the body gently flares out, but then that, that, that final flare is completed in the lens hood itself. And the lens hood, of course, is all metal, flocked on the inside, and, and so it just provides a very complete look. And so when you're shooting with the hood attached, it doesn't look like you have a tacked on accessory, but rather it looks like you have something that belongs there, because it does, it's, it's part of the design. The uh, Milvis 50mm f1.4 has a very common and not overly big 67mm front filter thread, and so uh, those filters are very widely and easily available. The overall uh, moving, if, if you've never had the pleasure of manually focusing a Zeiss lens, do yourself a favor sometime, but just beware it's going to spoil you. I noted already when shooting that I feel like the, the Tamron 45mm has one of the nicest manual focus rings of any autofocusing lens out there. But when you compare them back to back, there's just a very different feel in that very smooth and, but at the same time, it's very smooth, the damping here, but it really feels like you're accomplishing something. And there's just that right amount of friction that allows you to not only easily get to where you want to focus, but then when you want to slow down and really nail focus, you really feel like you have finite control. And so it's a pleasure to use in that regard. I'll be breaking down the image quality more as I move along, and uh, if you want to take a look down below, I've got a link to an image gallery that I'm routinely adding new images to as I do my review here. And of course, if you have any questions, things you would like me to address in my final review, the place to put those is in the comments down below. If you haven't followed me on social media, there's linkage there, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.